Peace world, I'm Julian Caldwell, aka J Swiss, and I just caught up with the Brown Bag All Stars' own Audible Doctor, an MC and producer who has worked with the likes of 50 Cent, Joel Ortiz, Consequence, Bumpy Knuckles, and much more. He's got his own solo project, Can't Keep the People Waiting EP, coming soon. I sat down with him and we talked about that project, sampling, and much more, so stay tuned. I was doing the, the season series EPs. Yeah. Um, I did winter and summer last year, and then this year I had slated the spring tape and the fall tape. Um, what happened with the spring tape was I was kind of waiting on one or two key features for the project to um, to get it done in time and get it out in springtime, so it follows the theme, obviously. Um, the features were late, because they're rappers. So it kind of delayed the whole project, and I didn't want to just wrap, they're kind of like key to the project, so I didn't want to just wrap up the whole project and put it out as was. And by the time I realized they were going to be that late, it was already like midway through spring, so even if I dropped the, the, the project at that point, it would have been like two weeks or, you know, a few weeks of promoting like the spring tape, and then it would have sounded old because we're at summer, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so really what happened was I just took uh, the spring tape, put it on the shelf, I'm gonna do the spring and fall tape next year, and then I just put together this brand new project. So I always have different songs and collabs lying around and stuff. Yeah. So I put together this brand new project called Can't Keep the People Waiting. Um, and it really just came out of me being like, my fans are hitting me up asking where the spring tape is. Yeah. So I was like, I gotta give them something. Like I try to do projects that fit well and have a theme throughout the whole thing, sonically sound. Like if you listen to the winter tape, it sounds like winter through the whole thing. Yeah. If you listen to the summer tape, it sounds like summer through the whole thing. And the spring tape was the same way, so I didn't really want to take too much off of it because I didn't want to ruin the, the continuity of it. Um, so there's a couple of tracks that I did end up using for this project, but most of them are brand new. And that's kind of what, what the delay is, that I'm literally putting a brand new project together. So I did last year, summer and winter. I'm just going to skip this year. Next year is going to be spring and fall. Okay. And then probably in the beginning of 2016, I'm going to do all four of them pressed up with the instrumentals and everything on vinyl and all that. I had just recently put all my lyrics on, on Rap Genius. Yeah. So I was writing everything out, and as I was writing, I noticed a lot of like themes that I follow in a lot of my lyrics. Not that I recycle anything, but I have a lot of like good and evil themes. Like I have a lot, a lot of heaven and hell themes, and angel devil themes, and, and I mean, I'm a Gemini. And I, I personally have a very distinct good and evil side to me, mm -hmm. and they come out at different times. And people around me will tell you, like, I'll either be like super friendly and nice and awesome, or I'll just be a dick. And it's like, it's, there's no in-between, it's no one like, you know, just I'm here, it's like one or the other, I'm, I'm very, it's weird. I've been rapping longer than I've been making beats. Um, and most people don't know that. It's just that beats come easier to me, that I can do it quicker. Um, it's more natural feeling to me. I'm still working out the kinks in my writing style and, and even like to write verses, I can't sit down and write a verse. Like I'll sit down and write four bars and then I'll get up and do something and come back and write another bar and then get up and then come back and change all of them and write six new bars. Like it's it's a weird process and it's really unpredictable. Like Premiere used to come by all the time. That's how I met Premiere obviously and that's how, you know. Um, but he was, he's like my number one producer, like my favorite producer, hands down. So the first time I met him, I was uh, an intern at the time and I was DJing and whatever and, and uh, he came in and was like, like, yo, what records are hot? You know, you keep coming to ask, you know, whoever is in the store, be like, yo, what records are hot right now so we can check them out. And it was funny because I was DJing and I was like, yeah, uh, and every single record I could think of was a premiere record. <laughs> like, he had so many records out at the time that were produced by him that every single record that I was trying to be like, oh, this is a dope record, I'd be like, oh, no, he produced that. You know, it was mad funny. <laughs> Recently, my group was caught for, for a sample for one of our records. Uh, we got really lucky in that the people that reached out were... Uh, very open-minded and they were like we like the song we just want it to be properly taken care of paperwork wise um, and we want the splits to be every and everything to be proper and then we'll support the song with you you know what I mean um, and that was one of our and that's you know we got caught due to one of those I'm not gonna name names one of those sites that lists like this is the song this is what they sampled da -da -da -da, and, like calling out all the samples and stuff <laughs> and, um, and like that was luckily a very good outcome it could have gone a very different way but for me like I don't want to give up sampling out because it a it'll change the sound of my music that's that's not what I love I love that sample based sound 
and B, that's what hip hop is. Like hip hop was dudes rapping over people's records. Like that, you know, like they used to cut up breaks from people's records and rap over. That's what hip hop is. Like how can you take that out of the industry, you know? Mm -hmm. If it's good, it's good. It really doesn't matter what you do. I relate to the sample based stuff. I love to hear a soul sample and hard boom bap drums. But I just as much like some Mike Will production that's some crazy, you know, 808, you know, pop sound and stuff. So it's like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you do, as long as it sounds genuine to you and, and it's dope, that's all that matters. To me, it's it's just the emotion of a record, um, or the point in a record where I feel the most emotion that catches me. And I, it's not like, oh, that's gonna sound good, I can flip this and do the drums like that. It's like, it's, it's, it's literally like a primal, like, I like that emotion, I need to use that. Like, there's, there's no real planning in my production, it's just like, that sound good, I want to use that. And like, I'll start messing with it until something happens. I hope not messing up any of his promo plans or anything, but he, your old Drew is not Nas. Um, I met him, I don't even remember the first time I met him. So years ago when I worked at Fat Beats, um, I put out a beat tape. He got a hold of the beat tape and was recording songs to it and stuff. Um, I don't remember if it was him or his manager at the time that reached out, but one of them reached out to me and was like, yo, he, he recorded some of your stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, um, I ran into him at a show and he was like, yo, what's up, I'm Drew. You know, I recorded some of your stuff, blah, blah, blah. And we started communicating back and forth. And um, I gave him more beats and he recorded the stuff and he'd send me rough verses and stuff like that. It never ended up amounting to anything. Um, the records are still kind of just in the vault. But, um, but, and this is like, eight years ago maybe, something like that, 2010. Nah, so I had to be like six years ago probably. Um, but yeah, I mean he just, he was a, a, a kid that was, he was managed by, by someone who I knew. And, uh, and he was just a dope rapper just trying to, to, to work. And he, you know, he got a hold of one of the beats that was recording. And, and, uh, and reached out and we started going back and forth and, and working on some stuff together. It was funny because he, you know, I I remember working with him back then and then he kind of disappeared for a while and then all of a sudden I see all this hype online about him being Nas and everything and like it just, it was hilarious to me because it was like, I, I know that, like I know the kid, you know, it's not, but you know, I, I don't know if that was intentional on his part or not, or if it was just like something that happened, but, but, um, but yeah, he's not, he's not Nas. <laughs> Can't keep people waiting, EP is on the way. Um, coming soon. Yo, what up? It's the Audible Doc, and you're watching Towards the Top.